First, we'll look at the input and output activities. They are defined in the two parameters called input activity ratio and output activity ratio. As an example, a bakery has a baking machine, which is our technology. And if you supply five kilograms of flour and four liters of water, you can get 50 baguettes. Then to produce one baguette, you need 100 grams of flour and 80 centiliters of water. This would translate into osmosis as an output activity ratio of 1 for the technology baking machine with the fuel baguette. For the input activity ratio, this will require 100 grams of flour and 80 centiliters of water, which are our fuels for the technology baking machine. The same technology concept can be applied to our power plants as well, with coal as fuel into the technology, which is a coal-fired power plant, and the output fuel is electricity. The efficiency of the power plant is the output activity ratio divided by the input activity ratio. Let's look at the baking machine again. Let's say it takes one hour to produce 50 baguettes. We can therefore not produce 100 baguettes in one hour. Rather, it will take two hours to produce 100 baguettes. It will take three hours to produce 150 baguettes. So, the capacity of the technology baking machine is 50 baguettes per hour and the activity is 150 baguettes in three hours. If we want to produce more baguettes, we can either install more capacity to produce more per hour, or we let the current machine run for more hours. If we install two more machines, the activity will be changed to 150 baguettes per hour. There is, however, often limitations to either the technology, for example, how much space, budget, or the fuel input. There's not enough flour or water to supply the activity needed. The same can be applied to the coal fire power plant, where the maximum input activity of the fuel, coal, to the power plant is 3,500 megawatt hours. The capacity is producing 1000 megawatt hours per hour, which leads to the output 1000 megawatt hours electricity. Coming to the second part of uh, the aspects of technology, it's very important with the activity, which has been mentioned a few times now. The recommended energy unit in osmosis is petajoules, but it can be an other unit depending on the size of the system. However, it's very important to be consistent in the whole model. The capacity to activity unit is important as it translates the technology's conversion between the unit capacity to energy. In this example, the capacity unit is gigawatt and the energy unit is petajoules. 
the conversion factor from gigawatt hour to petajoules is 0 0.0036. In osmosis, the capacity to activity is defined for the full year of 8760 hours. A power plant of 1 gigawatt can therefore produce 8760 gigawatt hours in one year. Now, if you convert 8760 gigawatt hours to petajoules, it means 8760 times 0 0.0036, which is 31.536 petajoules per year. This will be your capacity to activity unit if you use petajoules and gigawatt in your model. Finally, one of the most important aspects of your technology is costs. Three costs are usually defined. The operational and maintenance cost, which is divided in two cost variables. It's variable cost, which is defined cost per end unit, which is different consumables in a power plant, meaning that for every energy unit that you produce, it will also cost one of the variable cost. These costs are directly related to the activity. Fixed cost, which is the cost per capacity unit year, can be taxes, insurance, which are present in the power plant regardless of the activity of the power plant. Finally, the third cost is capital cost, which is defined as cost per capacity. It can be depreciation or return on investment.